Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. It's time again for our weekly Saturday chat. I feel like uh, I feel like it's like a fireside chat, like FDR used to do. I guess these are the times we need our fireside chats, is it? Um, so this week, uh, we can chit chat about what I've been up to, and also. Um, I kind of had an interesting idea for a topic this week, and that was supplies I'm not picky about and supplies I'm particular about. So I want you to think about this too, and in the comments below, I want you to let me know what art supplies, craft supplies you're really picky about, and what ones that you're not picky about. So I actually made a list because I was on, um, I spend way too much time on Facebook. I think that these Saturday, <laughs> These Saturday chats really show you how much I spend way too much time online because I'm always talking about something I saw on Facebook. But um, I'm in different crafting groups, and a lot of times people will ask advice for a particular type of cardstock or embossing powder or a paper trimmer. And one thing I see a lot is that people are very picky about paper trimmers, or maybe they've just never found the right paper trimmer for them. So uh, I was thinking, geez, you know, I am so not picky about paper trimmers, but I have friends too, and they'd be like, I just can't find a paper trimmer that cuts a straight line, uh, that cuts perfectly square, or I have a hard time finding cardstock that's perfectly square. And I assume we're all shopping at the same places, and we probably tried similar paper trimmers, and I've never had a problem with my paper trimmer not cutting square, or having not square cardstock. So it leads me to believe that I'm probably just not as picky as um, as maybe some other people that are a lot more precise than me. So, um, so that would be the first thing. I'm not picky about paper trimmers. I have an exacto. Oh, I'll show it to you, actually. Oh, we always do this, don't we? We have to, we have to move around. This is my paper trimmer. I've had this since uh, the late 90s. It's a guillotine style exacto. It is, um, I have to add 1 16th of an inch to my cuts because over the years, it's just gotten a little off. You can see that I'm not picky. That that would just would not fly in a lot of people's craft rooms, I don't think. Um, but I really like it. It's so sturdy. It cost me $25 back in, I don't know, 1996 or 97. And um, it is super durable. See if there's, I don't see like a, a model number on it or anything, but that's my, I use this every day. That's my main paper trimmer. I can do several sheets of cardstock. I can do chipboard. I can do all kinds of great stuff uh, with that. So I highly recommend that. And I never have to sharpen or change a blade because it sharpens itself as you cut it. I also have a, um, a Cutterpede rotary cutter from EK Success. You do have to change the blades on that, but I think I've only replaced the blade once and I've had it for, let's see, I always think about, I got it when I started scrapbooking and that was um, almost 18 years ago because that was when my son was born. And speaking of that, we got a letter in the mail that he's going to be too old for the pediatrician anymore. So that kind of like made my heart hurt that uh, my firstborn, my baby boy, my sweet little baby is is going to be too old to go to the pediatrician and has to have a grown up doctor, which just makes me feel so sad and a little old, but mostly sad. And uh, yeah, OK, but anyways, going back to other supplies I'm not picky about. Um, note, uh, note on my phone. Um, Things I'm not picky about. <laughs> Here's the things. That, my phone case. This I think w this came with somebody else's phone, and uh, and they didn't want the case, so I just took it from mine. So it looks like a it looks like a Hot Wheels car. It looks like it has like tire tracks on the back, and um, and I I realized because I was I was getting ready to do this you know this uh, fireside chat, and. Uh, and I was like, oh, it's cold downstairs. I had a t-shirt on. I'm like, I, I got to put a sweatshirt on. My sweatshirts have like paint on the arms and stuff. So I'm like digging through my closet. And so I was like, oh yeah, I'll wear this sweatshirt. And then it occurs to me, the t-shirt that I'm wearing and the sweatshirt was out of the Goodwill basket that I was like, we're going to take the girls to clean their closets out. And um, so this is like an old Navy kids large sweatshirt, girls large sweatshirt. Uh, I don't know where that the, the varsity shirt underneath came from, but they were from the Goodwill then that my girls were getting rid of. So, uh, so yeah, I was so not picky about just about everything, I think. Um, I'm not picky about embossing powder. I find that most brands work, whether you spend, whether you get like a pack of 24 for like 10 bucks or you spend six bucks a jar on it, I find that most embossing powder works the same. Um, colored cardstock, I'm not picky about my layered color cardstock. I am picky about my base weight color cardstock and the cardstock I use for markers. Uh, but for the layering stuff, as long as it's the color I want, 
I don't really, I'm not picky about it. I'll get the multi-packs that, I like the Michaels multi-packs. That's a pretty nice cardstock. And Joanne used to have a uh, textured one I really like too. Really lightweight though, but perfect for doing layers. Not picky about it. Um, I'm not picky about glue. As long as it comes out of the bottle and doesn't clog, I'm good. I'm not picky about it. If it holds my stuff, that's, that's all it needs to do. Um, I'm not picky about ink pads. I have so many different random ink pad brands. As long as the ink goes from the pad to the stamp, that's all I'm concerned with. I don't, I'm not brand loyal. I don't really care. As long as it works and uh, if it has re-inkers, that's a bonus. Um, Let's see. I'm not picky about acrylic paint. That's another thing. I use cheap acrylic paint. I use expensive acrylic paint. I use um, thinner paints. I use thicker paints. I do prefer thicker paint and I do prefer it in a tube to a bottle just because I find the bottle paints tend to um, not last as long, not have a long enough shelf life. And um, another another topic I think for one of these chats would be what craft supplies are we running out of first? in coronavirus. Well, we could add to this. I think my first thing I'm going to run out of will be an, ac an acrylic paint because my kids are using the acrylic paint. My daughters have been doing a lot of canvas painting and they've been using acrylic. So they've been hitting my stash pretty hard. And I think that I will probably run out of acrylic paint before anything else and maybe even canvases, but it's not even that I'm running out of it. It's that the girls are using it. Um, I'm not picky about gouache paint either. Uh, I find that gouache in particular is one of those types of paint that you can get spectacular results with some of the cheapest sets out there like the uh, um, the the Hemi like this set right here is so inexpensive it's like uh, well it used to be 20 bucks I think I should just be like 18 bucks I think it's now closer to 30 because it's gotten popular and Amazon has like really raised the prices on a lot of craft supplies and that's where you typically find this set um, I like the Arteza gouache, very affordable, uh, Reeves even. I haven't tried the Royal Nynickel gouache but I've heard decent things about it but I find most like student grade gouaches that are very affordable to be decent quality. Like you don't really notice a difference. Um, like the Lucas Studio gouache, that's their like lower end gouache. I think that works great. Um, I do have some M. Grimm gouache and that is spectacular. But honestly, when you're working with it and when you see it on the paper, I don't really see a big difference. I see a difference in letting it dry down in the palette. I find the more expensive gouaches don't crack as much. Uh, like they might crack, but they don't fall out. So you don't need to add glycerin to them or anything. But as far as like using it and how it looks on the paper, I don't see a heck of a lot of difference. Um, so that's something I'm not picky about. I'm not picky about stretch canvases. If I have to add another layer of gesso, I add another layer of gesso. I'm not picky about that. I'm not picky about craft supplies like felt and craft foam. Um, I really don't notice a huge difference. Um, again, I don't use it a ton, but I'll use whatever whatever's on the, uh, the shelf of the craft store and not be fussy about it. Um, and that's, oh, and glitter. I mean, glitter is glitter. As long as it's got the sparkle you want. I mean, you, I use cheap glitter. I don't know if I have any expensive glitter. I guess probably like some of the old Making Memories ones would be uh, a little more expensive, but yeah, glitter's glitter. Let lasts great. Um, I'm certainly not throwing it out because it's an environmental hazard. You know, there's a whole thing, should we ban glitter? Um, I don't think it's a craft glitter that's a problem. It's more the stuff in body washes. And why would I throw away bottles of glitter and put it right into the landfill when I could actually use it, trap it in some glue and keep it from, you know, floating around there in the wind? Uh, so that's my thoughts on it. I've already, I've already done a whole video about glitter. You can find that on my channel if you're, if you're curious. It was quite thought provoking. <laughs> quite controversial. Um, okay, so now let's move on to supplies that I am picky about. Um, I am picky about watercolors. Uh, watercolors is my main painting medium and you know it could be that since I use that type of paint more that I would be more discerning because um, I will notice little differences between brands of watercolor that I probably wouldn't notice in acrylic paints or um, oil paints or gouache because I'm not using it quite as much but I will notice very subtle differences between watercolors that um, a beginner might not notice because they just haven't had the experience uh, the experience with it for the amount of time. So I am picky about watercolors. Now that said, I have some cheap watercolors that I like. I've got some expensive watercolors that I like. Um, it's more of a quality thing. I'm not like, like a brand loyalist with watercolors, but I definitely am much more picky about uh, about them. If there's watercolors that I just, um, I don't like, I will definitely pass them on. I won't keep them just because, you know, I love watercolors. Like I love watercolors, but I don't love all watercolors. That said, there are a lot of good watercolors out there and I have a lot of watercolor palettes. Uh, 
I guess I'm not that, pick, that, <laughs> that discerning after all. I have a lot of them. Um, another thing I'm very picky about, well, I don't know about very picky, but I'm picky about colored pencils, um, especially the, because I tend to use them. I'm doing a whole, actually, by the time this this video goes up, I will probably have my, my colored pencil live stream up. I'm planning that. I'm recording this on Wednesday and the live stream is going to be Thursday for the colored pencils. And I'm going to show you my desk again, like we did last week. Uh, my desk here, uh, it's tidier than last week, but what I have is all these different brands of colored pencil all laid out in order from the smoothest or, or softest to hardest. I hope that took you all the way around. I couldn't see my, my uh, screen. Um, with a little swatch on each, whoops, good grief, with a little swatch for each one and little notes and stuff so I can compare and uh, show examples as we're doing it. But yeah, I am kind of picky about colored pencils because uh, the qualities that I like in a colored pencil isn't necessarily what everybody else likes. And um, so I'm, I'm picky to the extent that I know what I like and, uh, and that's what I gravitate towards. But um, that's more of just like, I think a working preference. I am picky about my watercolor paper and my watercolor sketchbooks because I'm picky about watercolors and I want to make sure they're going to behave in a way that um, that works with my uh, the way that I like to work. Now that said, I do use some cheap watercolor paper that I think is pretty decent quality. Um, I'm not going to dismiss a watercolor paper because it's cheap or because it's from a brand I've never heard of before. If I have the opportunity to try it, I probably will because I do enjoy uh, finding those gems and I like to find affordable supplies so that I can recommend them to beginners um, because watercolor paper is one of those things that just gets really expensive and if um, if you're a beginner and your watercolor paper is $10 a sheet you're not going to feel free to explore and experiment and a lot of times as you're beginning you might not even notice the differences between the different papers you might not with your your skill level you might not really be able to tell the difference between a $2 a sheet paper and a $10 a sheet paper so I think that it's uh and I'm talking like big sheets not like you know tiny little tiny little like nine by 12 sheets. Um, so I think it's important to, to have a, a good variety of papers to, to pull from. So I, I like watercolor paper, <laughs> but, I, and I, but I am picky about it. If it's a paper that's not behaving well, then I'll either use it for pastel or I'll give it to, uh, to my friend for the daycare. So she's the benefit of a lot of my uh, cast off art supplies. Um, let's see, I am picky about pastels. Um, I like a soft buttery pastels. I do have some hard pastels for under layers, but yeah, if it's a scratchy chalky pastel that doesn't like put down the color, then I don't want to even bother with it. Um, I'm picky about craft knives. Like uh, out of all the things to be picky about, like exacto knives, there is uh, an exacto knife I really like. And honestly, I think that it might've taken a little adventure away from my table. I think I might've lent it to one of the kids to use because I don't see it up there, but it's a Fiskars craft knife. And what I love about it is that these ones right here, these little cheapo, they always come like loose when I'm working with them. I don't know what it is. It's like every single, it's like some people with paper trimmers, it's like me and these, these cheap craft knives. I don't know why, but it seems like I always get these and they always start to wiggle loose when I'm using them. And I don't know what that is, but the Fiskars one, I really like it because it's thicker, it's more comfortable to hold. And there's a lever on the bottom that you bend and that releases your, your number 11 blade and you just put a new blade and it takes your standard blade and then you just lock it back up and uh, and it's fantastic. It doesn't come on, doesn't come loose as you're cutting. And um, that is definitely, I'm picky about that. That's the only knife I really want to use. I will use that if I can't find my other one. That's really bugging me now because I don't know where it ended up. But, uh, <laughs> and I don't have a backup either. That's the only one I have of those. But yeah, I'm picky about craft knives. And I'm picky about the cardstock that I stamp on. Not the stuff I use for, the colored cardstock card I use for layering, but the stuff I stamp on. Um, I like to use a the Nina Super Smooth for alcohol marker, and I like to use the, um, the Bristol for watercolor or the uh, Hot Press watercolor paper for watercolor products for stamping. Um, and I took a chance on some paper that another YouTuber recommended saying it was just as good as Nina and I could tell the difference and I do not like it as much and that's just going to be sitting in the wings to use as you know basic white card stock because it just did not blend as well for me I could definitely tell the difference and uh so I am picky about white card stock for stamping apparently um so I'm curious what uh what products are you picky about 
<coughs> excuse me, um, let me know in the comments below what products you just like, yeah, it doesn't matter, I'll use whatever, whatever's available, you can let me know that too. Um, weekly tip, make sure your pants still fit, and in addition, try some different pants on these, I'm, I've got these, uh, Boy, my outfit is brought to you by Old Navy, apparently. I have these uh, Old Navy jeans on today. I'm like, I better try on a different pair this week, maybe low-rise ones, to make sure that the buttons still button. Because what can happen, you know, we're not going anywhere. We're staying home, right? So we'll wear our jeans, like, I don't know, 10 times before we wash them because we're not going anywhere to get dirty. So we don't need to wash our jeans that often. And they can stretch out a little bit, and then they can be a little, uh, a little deceiving. They can tell you everything's fun and dandy. Go ahead and eat that slice of cake and bake those cookies and baking bread is my Achilles heel. I love to bake bread and with people home to eat it, I'm much more inclined to bake more bread and it's just, just dangerous, friends. So, um, yep, make sure your pants button. <laughs> my public service announcement for the week. Um, get outside, enjoy some fresh air. Uh, it's an interesting fact too, if you're, uh, if you're home, you have more free time, it's a great time to get healthy, to, um, spend time cooking healthy, nutritious, whole foods, uh, getting a little exercise, and for a little extra inspiration, if you're not someone who exercises, you will benefit more from 15 minutes a day walking or 15 minutes a day um, gardening, anything like that, you'll benefit from that 15 minutes more than someone who ex exercises regular that adds an extra 15 minutes or half an hour to the routine. So think about that. You've got the most to gain if you're not somebody that exercises regularly. And it doesn't have to be like some crazy workout. It could be walking, you know, around your house a couple times. It could be, um, back when I used to work at the senior center as the art director, um, they had a class there called Sit and Be Fit. And it was, and it, there used to be like a public television program you could probably find videos on YouTube um, but it would be chair exercises you know something to get you moving because you you know there's so many ways you can improve with the time that you may be given now uh, if you're at home um, and if you're working it's definitely if you're out there in public and working in the public it's definitely um, a good time to make sure that you are staying healthy you're doing things that can keep your body strong and healthy and uh, improve your immune system and uh, eating healthy foods and exercising is a great way to do that and um, getting outside in the sunshine the fresh air is really good for your mental health and outlook um, it's also nice to go out and paint too if you have something scenic nearby to paint everything's still pretty brown and muddy around here but uh <laughs> but it's still nice to get out in it so that's it for this week's fireside chat <laughs> oh boy oh, got a new stick oh that's something new in the studio i got a new stick on the ceiling because in a fit of rage last week i ripped down my old one because it kept jiggling and uh shims kept falling on me it was a pain um, so yeah, that's what's new with me. What's new with you? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoy these videos. Until next time, happy crafting.